My name is Joy Hewitt, and my date of birth is September 14th, 1935, and I live in East Carbon, Utah. I went to work in uh, 1978, and I worked until, and I was 43 then, and, uh, and then I was laid off from the mine in 1984. And was that layoff because the mine was shutting down? The mine was shutting down, yes. Mm -hmm. And you come from a mining family, is I that do, right? I do. My father was a coal miner. My husband is a coal miner. Uh, my son and my grandson. And how is it that you got to work in the mines? Well, it. Um, I was working in a nursing home. I was an LPN and I was working in a nursing home. And a couple of my friends, you know, had decided maybe we ought to try the coal mine. So I ran that past my husband, and he said, well, I don't know. Uh, let's think about it. And then I asked my children, and of course they were all for it because they knew, you know, there would be a lot of benefits, you know, that I wasn't receiving at the nursing home. He thought about it overnight, and he said, I think that if that's a decision you need to make because I'm not sure you know what you're getting yourself into. So I said, well, I'm willing to give it a try. And so uh, we went from there, went and took the mine class and, and um, got hired right away at Brass Taw. It was Brass Taw at that time and um, before Price River Coal bought them out and uh, went to work on the belt line where most of the new hires work, and I worked there for quite a while. Tell me what that involved. Okay, mostly shoveling, <laughs> lots of shoveling, <laughs> a lot, and uh, and before I, I don't think I probably had picked up too many shovels in my life. A lot of the gals that work in the mine, you know, they uh, work farm machinery and and that type of thing. I'd never done anything like that. I've been a waitress and a cook and, and a nurse, but nothing like that. And so um, when I first started, I had blisters on my hands. I had a tennis elbow and my knee, and I'd wrap all these up every day for going to work so I could get prepared and try to keep up with the guys that you were with because we were with the crew at the time because we were all new hires. Mm -hmm. And then after I had worked on the belt and toughened up a little bit so I, you know, didn't have to wrap my elbows and knees and everything every day and uh, I could work just with the gloves on without having to put a lot of band-aids on my hands. And uh, then I went in the section for a enough so I could get experience. So it, when I became a fire boss, I would know what was going on in a minor section. And then um, I decided I wanted to kind of move up a little bit. So I checked into what the requirements were for a fire boss and to get your fire boss papers. And so um, I, uh, found out that it took two years in the mine, and I, at that time that I started thinking about it, um, I had about a year and a half, so I studied, and my husband helped me, and uh, so I took the fire boss test, and I passed the test, so then I started fire bossing at the mine. What attracted you to the fire boss? Well, I watched the fire bosses, and I seen that um, they had a lot of responsibility and I wanted to put my heart into what I was doing. I wanted to learn. I wanted to make sure that I could do uh, what was required for a fire boss. What does a fire boss do? They go in first. What are they doing? Okay, they're checking the mine for any hazards. You each have a, a section. And my section was eight miles of belt line. Plus there was a couple of, of uh, different areas that I would have to get off the belt line, go in, check, and uh, 
like some of the old works. They were no longer working. They put, would put the stoppings in and you had to check and make sure that the seals were secure in all of those different uh, stoppings. You had to study to be a fireman. Oh yeah, you have to make, you have to take a, st a state test. Mm -hmm. it, um, and uh, to my knowledge, at that time, there was no other women in the West, I don't know about the East, but in the West that had taken the test. I held my breath until I passed the test, and then um, they immediately gave me a fire boss job. Did you ever have any close calls? Well, yes, but they were behind me. <laughs> I had, uh, when I was walking the belts, I had a whole uh, area just slough right off but I had just passed by there, and fortunately for, for me, I, uh, I had gone past that, and, and I wasn't hurt at all. It's, it made you uh, know that you were in a coal mine because it was a huge bounce, and, and then that, uh, the side slacking off, and I think that was probably the only really close call that I had in the mine all the time I was working there, so I was very fortunate. Even, well, a lot of times in the section it gets a little scary when the, you know, when the miner's cutting and some of the top comes down and those kinds of things, but I really was not ever in a real close call. I think they, the guys kind of gave me a little extra respect because I wasn't afraid to go in mine. But once you get into a section and you're on a crew, then it's really a great place to work. And uh, I think I enjoyed my time in the coal mine so much after I got used to it. I will tell you of an interesting story of one of the Indian girls that uh, worked on the belt line. And um, she, uh, she was pregnant. And of course, she didn't tell anybody for a long time. And finally she told me she was pregnant. and. Uh, and uh, she was working, and she uh, fell off of one of the uh, ladders. You know, sometimes you have to climb up the ladder to get across the belt. And she fell off of there, and she, they thought she broke her leg. And so, of course, they called me because, uh, you know, she was a little timid because she was a, a Native American. And, and they said, Joy, you better come down here because she's kind of timid about everything. And I said, uh, okay, uh, give me a few minutes, you know, it took me a while to walk down there. And uh, I said, and I think I better tell you that she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Oh, my word. They said, you get down here. We're going to send a car, uh, one of the carts up to get you. Hurry, get down here. We don't know what to do with a pregnant woman. And I said, you don't have to do anything any different with a pregnant woman than you do with any woman. So, and I said, and if she's having any difficulty, she will tell you. Was it after you were laid off with the mines that you got to be active with the union? I mean, I know you were a union member. Yes. A minor, uh -huh. but I'm thinking more in the, in the office ups, upside. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the office upside, I was pretty active in the union because um, I had, uh, there was a lady that came from back east and uh, organized what was called Coal Employment Project, and a lot of coal, a lot of the women miners became a part of that, and they were very strong union. And this uh, would be the United Mine Workers. The United Mine, Mine Workers, uh huh. And um, the women miners were able to. I don't know if you're aware of the the per, per, parental there. I got it at leave clause. That is, uh, it's a federal law, and the women miners. Uh, there was a group that got to. There was a group that. Uh, Betty Jean Hall, who was the administrator of, of CEP, got together and formed uh, like a little coalition from each uh, area. And so uh, we drafted the uh, family leave clause. We started out very, very small. I mean, like maybe 10 women miners and Betty Jean and two United Mine Worker women. And uh, we took it all back to our local union and we started like a grassroots thing, and we got it support from the unions, and then we got it from the international, 
and finally we were able to take the clause and take it to the Senate and Barbara Boxer presented it on the floor and it was passed. And I'm very grateful that um, at the time that we were able to get that passed. And so that was one of the things that, that I was very proud of with, with the union and working with them and working with CEP. Was the union supportive of you going underground? Did you have to buck that? Um, you know, I didn't uh, really, uh, I don't think they were real supportive of it, except for the fact that it might look good for them, you know, if, uh, especially if we attended the union meetings. And they really discouraged that. Uh, you know, they really, oh, you don't want to go to those meetings, they're so boring. And so the women and I decided, hey, they don't want us to go. We better go find out what's going on. So <laughs> one of us went to every meeting from there on in, and then I became involved with it. You were elected to an office. Right. So you have to go to each local, to their meetings, and present yourself and uh, of course, Secretary Treasurer, um, I think probably was a little bit easier to be um, uh, campaigning for because a lot of the guys said, well, you know, our wife takes care of our money, so, you know, and you had to get a fourth of the locals before you could even run. That would was say. Was that hard for you to do? You know, it wasn't because uh, I had been familiar with them. Uh, through working with CEP at the at the time, and so I had come in contact with a lot of them because a lot of the women miners were from from that area that you know that I had a lot of contact from. Thinking about both your experiences underground and your experiences representing miners at the union, what's good about union as opposed to what maybe the union isn't doing so well? I think the union has lost a lot of its power and I think a lot of it has been because uh, they've, uh, the mines have become owned by large corporations instead of just companies. The large international corporations that have a lot of money that can fight hard against the unions. And so they've lost a lot of their power. And, uh, and I do think that, um, as the UMWA has lost a lot of its uh, mines have shut down, a lot of, uh, and the new mines that have opened up because they're owned by international corporations, they, uh, of course, are non-union. And uh, they, they make sure that, you know, that doesn't happen when they, when they hire. I do think that the mines were safer. They were more stringent about safety than they are now. And I think that M. Shaw has lost a lot of its power, especially, um, this is a little political under the Republican uh, time that they've been in office. I think that it has, it has really watered down a lot of our federal laws. And uh, so I think that, uh, it's not as strong as it used to be by any means. If you had to do it over again, would you go back underground? Oh yes, I'd love to go back underground. <laughs> but I, I'm going to be uh, 78 years old on my birthday, so I don't think I <laughs> have any dreams of ever going back underground. <laughs> it's a lot of the spirit of working in the mine. I mean, these are the things that make it interesting and make it, um, make it something that uh, you hold dear in your heart. And the people that you work with, you really start to think of them like family.